Welcome to the Sleep is a Skill podcast. My name is Molly McLaughlin, and I own a company that optimizes sleep through technology, accountability, and behavioral change. Each week, I'll be interviewing world-class experts ranging from doctors, innovators, and thought leaders to give actionable tips and strategies that you can implement to become a more skillful sleeper. Let's jump into your dose of practical sleep training. Welcome to the Sleep is a Skill podcast. Our episode today is a little unique in that it is actually more of a conversation back and forth between myself and an expert in the area of skincare. But why are we talking about that on a podcast called Sleep is a Skill? Well, the reason is that this skincare line was designed by a Nobel laureate in chemistry and is actually bringing in some of the concepts that we speak about on a routine basis over here around chronobiology, the science of time and how time affects our biology. So they're really leveraging chronobiology in the science in which they are creating their skin care line, but particularly in this conversation, looking at sleep, how sleep can be leveraged in a way to ensure that you are setting yourself up powerfully in all areas, including the anti-aging process. So a little bit about our guest, Audrey is the head of brand at Noble Panacea, which she co-designed and created with founder Sir Fraser Stoddart a 2016 Nobel laureate in chemistry with 15 plus years of experience in marketing and international brand development. Audrey is a devotee of beauty throughout her career. She has partnered with CEOs and founders to shape beauty brand architecture and strategic marketing initiatives. She is a visionary brand builder driven by her passionate personality and curiosity to bring unique and innovative brands and products to the market. She is known for being creative, dynamic, enthusiastic, and goal-oriented to lead teams to success. Audrey is equally a people leader and business leader as she's worked across and developed multiple multicultural teams. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the podcast. So I get a lot of questions around sleep supplements, and I'm very hesitant to just throw out a whole laundry list of possibilities. One, I don't think it's the most responsible thing to do. I really do believe in testing to see what types of supplements make sense for you. And two, because I really truly believe that most of the things that you can do to improve your sleep are behavioral, psychological, environmental in nature, and often don't cost a dime. However, there is one supplement that I personally take every day and that I do feel quite comfortable with suggesting for most individuals to experiment with because of a couple of reasons. It's high safety profile and high rates of deficiencies in our modern society. Some put the numbers as somewhere around 80% of the population being deficient in this one area, and that is magnesium. So magnesium has been called the calming mineral, and some report that magnesium can increase GABA, which encourages relaxation on a cellular level, which is critical for sleep. Magnesium also plays a key role in regulating our body's stress response system. Those with magnesium deficiency usually have higher anxiety and stress levels, which negatively impact sleep as well. Now, before you go out and buy a magnesium supplement, It's important to understand that most magnesium products out there are either synthetic or they only have one to two forms of magnesium, when in reality, your body needs all seven forms of this essential sleep mineral. So that's why I recommend a product from my friends over at BioOptimizers. They have created something called the Magnesium Breakthrough. And taking this magnesium before bed helps you relax and wake up refreshed and energized. And while we don't recommend that you go too nuts on looking at all the sleep stage classifications on all your wearables, I will share anecdotally that many clients have reported improvements in their deep sleep trend numbers. Again, I don't want you going nuts on the sleep stage classification numbers on your wearables, but I do want to let you know about that because I know that many of you do reach out on questions of how to improve your deep sleep. So I also love that BioOptimizers offers free shipping on select orders, and they offer a 365-day money-back guarantee on all their products. Plus, they have a customer satisfaction rating of 99.3%. Very impressive. And you can get 10% off Magnesium Breakthrough. Again, this is the same magnesium that I use every single night. 
And finally, you can get 10% off Magnesium Breakthrough. Again, that's the magnesium supplement that I use every single night by going to www.mag, M-A-G, so magbreakthrough.com forward slash sleep is a skill. And be sure to use the code sleep is a skill for 10% off. Welcome to our conversation with Molly Hisman, uh, where we will really discuss today on how to maintain, I would say, like an exceptional skin during the winter time, especially when we have this shift of time. Um, I'm Audrey Boyce Nicolai. I am the head of brand of Noble Panacea. And today I'm very pleased to welcome Molly Hisman, our Noble Panacea sleep advisor expert. Um, she's the creator of Sleep is a Skill. Please uh, welcome Molly Hisman. And hi, Molly. This is such a pleasure to have you here today. And I will let you introduce yourself. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to go into a topic that I'm really, really passionate about and really committed that in this conversation, we'll share some practical takeaways for people. But a little bit about me. I am Molly Eastman. I started Sleep is a Skill to help really give people agency over their sleep through a unique blend of technology, accountability, behavioral change. Uh, and some of the ways that we do that are through our podcast, where we bring on top sleep experts. We have a weekly newsletter where we share all kinds of sleep tips and tricks. And we just are really standing in the fact that if people really take on their sleep mindfully and intentionally, it can be really transformative for their whole life. And certainly in this conversation, have benefits for your skin and your any of your concerns on the ways to age gracefully. This is absolutely a piece of that puzzle. Yes, definitely. So we are here today because we launched our chronology sleep mask in the exceptional collection earlier this year. It's an exceptional product, as the name uh, is saying. And this product has been really built on the skin chronobiology during the night, especially. And it's really so important for us to work with you, to work with Molly, to really educate uh, our customer and woman to really build a strong sleep routine. Because the more you sleep and better you sleep, at some point, better the, the mask and the sleep mask will work. And today with Molly, the objective is really like we are here today to discuss this important topic about how to understand at some point how our body, how our skin and our sleep is really impacted and it will adjust because of the change of weather, because we are moving to winter, because of the switch of the time, because of the time change. And of course, I really want uh, myself and our consumer to learn some tips from you, from our experts. So this will lead me to my first question to really like understand, Molly, what will really happen to our body when the time change to the winter time, uh, including the change of weather that has also an impact on our body. Absolutely. And you're pointing to a really important point here because... When we shift throughout the seasons, historically, what would happen, there would be a shift in behaviors as well to match those seasons. And so I think that that's a great place to begin because what we would have seen in the past is something that we could learn from and bring into our modern society. So what I mean by that is that Historically, when we'd be moving into the winter, we would actually be embarking on longer periods of darkness throughout the course of that time frame. And so that would usually mean that we would actually sleep more. We would have longer periods of rest. We would prioritize this and there wasn't Netflix and there weren't all these other options, smartphones, all the things. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So back then we would actually embrace this time. And I think now I'm not suggesting for everyone to move out into the woods in a cabin or any of that. But what I'm saying is how could we in our modern society be informed by that kind of historical blueprint and start to embrace darkness a bit more, which really is known as the vampire hormone as we talk about melatonin. And we're going to talk a lot about that because that's really, really important in this conversation, important hormone that helps to keep us on track with the workability of our daily rhythms. And we'll talk about rhythms, but Part of the access point to building sufficient melatonin ourselves is to bathe ourselves in sufficient darkness. Now, the problem that we're seeing in modern society is that 
we're shifting these time changes and adjusting to this new season, but we're not changing our behaviors. So we're still keeping all the lights on. We're still watching all the yeah. shows until late and all of these things and confusing all of these clocks, which we will get into. That's one of the reasons I really appreciate your company because it's really prioritizing and understanding the immense importance that these clocks have on every functioning of our body and our mind. So from that place, what we can do is ensure that we're not falling subject to things like seasonal affective disorder, which we see happening a lot, particularly in Northern hemisphere locations where there's less opportunity to get sufficient sunlight naturally throughout the course of the day. And we have those bad habits that we were, we might not even realize they're bad habits. We just have these habits that we're getting lots of light, lots of TV time, lots of screen time. And that is throwing off our ability to create sufficient melatonin. And when you start having those hormones thrown off like melatonin, that can often have a seesaw effect with things like cortisol. So this is a really delicate balance. And when circadian rhythms change due to these shifts in time and that less exposure to sunlight and daylight, Some of the things that can come up, we see more instances of insomnia, which can look like difficulty falling asleep, staying asleep, or early rising. We can see things like mood shifts. We can see depression, anxiety. Some of these things can really come up in droves and high numbers if we aren't adjusting mindfully. Now, one quick thing I want to say about that is... One of the distinctions that's been called out is almost something like social jet lag or self-created jet lag. Some of these terms, right? I like that. Social jet lag, yes. Yeah, because now what we're doing is shifting ourselves off of these innate rhythms of nature and starting to kind of, you know, piece together our own kind of self-created time, timelines by having all the lights on, having friends over, doing all the things we want to encourage those things. We want to live a rich, full life. However, how can we at the same time prioritize our sleep? So my recommendation for people would be to see how can you start to look at your days and have it align just a bit more with these rhythms than maybe we would normally would on our own. So what could that look like? We can get into some of those kind of suggestions throughout this conversation, but there are a lot of things that we can do behaviorally. Everything you explain about like the change on your body, especially the, the mood makes total sense to me because I can always feel it at winter time. And sometimes what we forget is the skin because at some point we always also think of our wardrobe, like we change it, we adjust it, we have a refresh, but we never think of the skincare routine and, and your skin needs a shift, need to change because the skin is affected as soon as the weather is cold, is humid, it's rainy, it's windy, especially with a variation of temperature between inside where you have the heaters and and heating and outside when you have this cold atmosphere and and low temperature, your skin will be under big stress. And what does it mean? It means like it will affect the skin barrier. And as soon as your skin barrier is affected, um, your skin will be and will become more irritated It will be tight, it will be dry, it will be at some point dehydrated um, and will become even more sensitive. So this is so important to me to also adjust um, your skincare routine and ritual and focus more on hydration and nourishment. Um, I, I just wanted to bring to bring this point because sometimes we just forget about the skin while we never forget about the pullover and the goods. Um, and, and, and to your point also, so you were mentioning like, um, the mood and, and I do feel it personally. And I, I do think everyone is, is feeling it during the winter. So can you explain me, like, what can I do basically? Like what? So first, can you explain me more why our mood is impacted and why it is affected so much? And what at some point are your like secrets that you would like to share with us? Absolutely. So one, I think there's an opportunity for us to embrace these seasonal shifts. I think many of us can go into these different shifts, particularly into the winter, begrudgingly. And oh, why do we change these clocks? And what's what's yeah. going on here? Right. And the frustrations. And I think there's an opportunity for us to 
except that winter months do have longer stretches of that darkness like we spoke to. And how can we have that work in our favor? How can that be a season of rest? How can that be a time where we do prioritize some recovery in our lifestyle and how we're really setting up our lifestyle? What would that look like? What would be some of the practical implications of that? Well, for one thing, one of the things that we really suggest from a sleep perspective and a circadian rhythm entrainment perspective is what it's called. It's to entrain and strengthen your circadian rhythm, this rhythm that happens 24 hours a day, is to really seek out sunlight as much as you possibly can in the first half of your day. So what I mean by that is you want to seek out bright light exposure. And some people will say, oh, wait, hold on. I'm in a Northern latitude location. The sun is barely out. I really struggle with that. So a couple things. One, we do want to still prioritize, and it's not a wild amount. It's you know a certain stretch of time in the morning to really signal awakeness so that you do have that strong circadian rhythm. However, there will be times when that might not be practical for some people. So that's when we can bring in things like light boxes. So a lot of people really historically had used this for seasonal affective disorder, but I really am of the stance that all of us could utilize some form of light therapy is kind of what it's related to, chronotherapy, mm-hmm. light therapy. And so you're using this as a signaling cue for your for your brain to kind of know that it's time to wake up. And so we, but okay. we don't want to, right? But we don't want to just do that. Yeah, at, yeah we uh, and to do that just willy nilly on different times every single day. That's going to be confusing, right? Like that jet lag we spoke to. To your point, should we keep our kind of window open and do not have curtains so we wake up with the sun? Oh, good question. Yes. So I will say all of these things, when we talk about sleep optimization, it exists on a spectrum. So there's kind of like the most optimal thing you could do. And then there's other things that are more closely aligned to that. So I want to be responsible for people that say, oh, well, I, I am a shift worker. I have this, I have that. So I understand that there are considerations. And to your point, if you can set it up in your lifestyle, and that is something that you can bring consistency to where you are rising with the sun. There are a lot of new studies coming out that when you, the more aligned you are with these rhythms, we seem to have benefits that are far reaching that are, you know, really going into things like what we spoke about mood. We spoke about energy, but it also applies to things like strength. We're talking grip strength. We're talking longevity factors. We're talking cognition. So there's so many things that the more aligned we are to these rhythms, they seem to have a lot of really beneficial implications. So If you can do that, if that is in your repertoire, great. If that is off course from some of the responsibilities that you have, you want to mimic that kind of sunlight awakening process yourself. So you could also get like dawn simulators. uh, So what those are, clocks that will simulate the rising of the sun in your environment, even if you are slightly off those rhythms. But what I will say is that we want this to happen largely seven days a week at about the same time. And that's the one that I see really throw a lot of people off and, and they might not even realize how far off they might be. I see this a ton where people will say, oh no, I'm pretty consistent. And then we look at their different, we yes. use a lot of tech, right? And so we'll look at their their numbers and then they, it's true, they might be consistent four or five times a week, but then we see the weekends or what have you. And that's when they're sleeping in two, three hours and they're not realizing how much that could be throwing them off and creating more of that jet lag. So that's just one piece that you could bring in. And what do you mean by consistent? Like it should be like, what is for you a consistency? Like one hour of difference is huge. Or you are talking about 15 minutes. Like what really means consistency? Ah, good question. So what we traditionally suggest is about plus or minus 30 minutes on either side, you know, because sometimes you wake up a little early, sometimes you sleep in a little bit. So usually about 30 minutes. Now I will say something wild happens, you're out for a wedding or a celebration or something. That would be a time where we suggest maybe swinging it out by about an hour. And so many people say, what? I stayed up so late. Why would I do that? That seems so, you know, just like a not great move for my health and well-being. While it might seem on the front end to really be 
harsh. What we are standing for is that you are actually siding with your rhythms and that you're helping to support yourself to then have enough sleep pressure that evening to get yourself quickly back on track versus multiple nights of having to slowly get yourself back on track. Because what happens? You sleep in and then you're not tired at the same time. So now you're going to bed later and now you're creating a whole cascade of problems for yourself. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah, definitely. We just need to put the word on it because when you think about it, it makes total sense. Yeah, absolutely. No, 100%. And, you know, a couple of things that can be something for us to consider. Now, I will say there are a lot of things that go into this of optimizing your sleep and paying attention to this throughout different seasons. And with that, a couple other things that you could bring in to help support yourself to maybe move on this kind of earlier schedule where the sun's setting earlier and rising earlier couple things. You can also use something like meal timing as a really helpful tool. So what I mean by that is if you are moving your first bite of food, now this is out of some research from Dr. Sachin Panda out of the Sulks Institute and looking at how food acts as a circadian lever to tell your body and all these clocks what time it is and what to be doing when. If you move your meal timing a bit earlier and your first bite and your last bite a bit earlier, that can give your body enough time to really rest and digest, get you sufficient and quality sleep, but also tell your body that, okay, we're skewing earlier now versus later. If you were to go later, that would actually make you tired later. Okay. Sounds clear. I I need to change some stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Don't we all? I mean, these things, and you know, it's so funny because a lot of the things that we might be speaking to can sound maybe doable or something that just, okay, yeah, that fits, that makes um, sense logically, but it's the application of those things. And so 100%. And so when you've got social kind of commitments and people that are living on a totally different rhythm, that's where one of the things that we talk about being sleep leadership, you know, so how can you prioritize your sleep? How can you have it all? How can you still be social? How can you do all these great things, but prioritize your sleep and make some of just these slight tweaks. And you'll find that if you are measuring these, which, you know, in our modern society, wearables, different pieces of tech, you can start to actually gamify this and see how much of a difference you can make just by some of these shifts. And the other couple of things that I can just rattle off for other additional practical takeaways, room temperature, keeping your room really on the much cooler side than most people realize. So what that looks like, at least for Fahrenheit wise, is the recommendations between 60 to 67 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's out of the National Sleep Foundation. And so many people hear that and they say, oh my gosh, that's so cold, really. And so what I find is that as people start to adjust, even on the on the warmer side of that, oftentimes over time, they start to really look forward to that shift because they're getting much better sleep return on investment, right? So you also want to use temperature as a cue to ensure that you are getting tired at the right times. So in your environment, you can strategically lower the temperature in your space if you do have that available for you, or if you're in the winter and you crack a window or wherever you might be so that you can start to cool that space. And all of that does is tell the body, okay, we need to start preparing for sleep. So that is one thing you can be aware of. You can also, ensure that there's certain changes that you're making for women of menstruating age, you can be aware of the fact that our cycles are, and that's known as infradian rhythm. So for men, we're all mindful of our circadian rhythm. All humans are operating on a circadian rhythm. But then for women of menstruating age, we also want to be mindful of our infradian rhythm, which is a cycle that's happening around 30 days. And so the more you can be attuned to that, that can be helpful. And that's kind of a longer conversation, but just beginning to notice how even in the few, about a week or so before your period, how that might be a time where you might have a little bit more disrupted or more of kind of a sympathetic response tendency. And we see that in measurable higher heart rates, lower HRV, heart rate variability, and other metrics that show us that we're just a little bit more stressed. And that's part of the hormonal shifts that are aligned with that. So that's a time when you really want to even more prioritize self-care. And some of the things that we'll be speaking about today, you can actually utilize, whether that's things like massage or other you know, relaxation techniques, that would be a great time to bring that in so that it doesn't impact your sleep in a measurable way. 
Ok, super clear. And do you think like having vitamin C incorporated into wintertime would make sense? Yes, of course. Body? Yeah, great call out. Particularly when there's times when our immune system might be more vulnerable based on a number of reasons that that can often come about in winter months, uh, things like that can make a lot of sense. And I know from a skincare perspective, certainly there's a lot that we can utilize for that both internally and topically. Yes, that's true. And this is why we launched a vitamin C booster in September because it's a, it's a product and does the exceptional collection, but this is true, like vitamin C. And this way I wanted to understand from your point of view, how it has an, an impact, but vitamin C, the body cannot produce it. It doesn't produce vitamin C. And so this is important to feed the, like your body with vitamin C, but also your skin, because your skin needs this extra boost during winter time. And the vitamin C, the main benefits of the vitamin C is really like to protect your skin from all the external aggressor, it's like a super powerful antioxidant. And it will also give you this extra glow, this gorgeous and infinite glow we usually have during uh, the summertime and much less in the winter time, we have to be uh, realistic. So this vitamin C booster, like under the collection, exceptional, is really like a must have to add into your skincare routine. It's like really just a four week treatment to really boost your skincare routine, to boost your skin during the winter. And a lot of people need it. Um, it has more than 20% of l acid and it will really like protect your skin, but also give this glow. So I do think like we need to bring vitamin C from inside via food supplements, but also for your skin. Oh, a hundred percent. And to your point of those times in the winter when we need that extra boost, that's one of the things that I've really brought into my repertoire, both for myself and for my clients, is some of these additional things that can help support the nervous system, which are often in the realm of relaxation techniques. Some of the things that we mentioned can be really important to bring about during this time to help support the immune system. And the chronobiology sleep mask is part of the reason we got all connected in the first place and yes. so grateful for to find a company that is prioritizing the fact that our skin acts very differently at different parts of the day and the night. And even you can sub it down even more thin slice it that it's even acting differently on the first half of the night than it is in the middle of the night than right before you're going to wake up. So there's so much yes. there. So I often am bringing that in when I feel like I need an extra boost. Actually, I got married earlier this year and I used that yes. in prep for you know the big day. But certainly in the winter months, I um, utilize that for that self-care, mood boosting kind of ritual. So now I'm training myself that that's part of that evening routine akin to you know when you're sleep training a child, you have certain things and yes. steps that you bring in. We want to do that for ourselves. That's true. I'm happy to hear that. Yes, exactly. Right. And, you know, with that circadian rhythm piece, how this product can really leverage some of the different changes that we're often speaking to on our podcast and with our company. Yes. I love that you've really dedicated so much energy and science behind that. So I'm wondering if you can share a bit more about how that product does work, how the hours are leveraged in a way that we really take the most advantage of this time when our when our skin is at rest to give us the best boost possible. Yes. And, and I, I'm happy you brought this topic because uh, this is true. We have been connected thanks to this product at some point. Yes. Um, but it was really important for me and for us, for the team to really like understand also how the skin works. So when we launched uh, the chronology sleep mask, so this is really like an exceptional product. There is nothing comparable in the market. And because it has been really purely designed to work while you sleep at some point. So it's so intelligent product. It works really in synergy with your skin chronology rhythm. So we know the skin has different cycles when you sleep. First, it will detox. Then it will be the repair and regeneration process. And then at 4 a.m. in the morning, this is where you have the peak of absorption. So um, at first, we really work really hard with our laboratory to really understand how the skin works at night. So what is the cycle to really developed a product thanks to our technology, the OSMV, the Organic Supermolecular Vessel, to really understand how to program 
or mask to make sure it releases the ingredients at the right moment. Because at some point, we know that at 4 a.m., this is a peak of absorption, but no one will wake up at 4 a.m. just yeah. to have your moisturizer. Right. And, and so this is not an option. So the mask, will, the mask will do it for you. So how does it work like overall? So the skin during the night goes through a circadian rhythm, like it has a specific cycle. So we have three cycles in total, approximately from 11 p.m. 4 a.m., this is a step one. So this is where your skin will detox. Then on step two, this is from 2 to 4 a.m., approximately, this will be the repair mode. And at 4 a.m., as I explained before, this is where you have your peak of absorption. So our technology and our mask has been really fully programmed to really deliver and work for us. So it will really deliver the active ingredients at the right time, in the right order. So to really follow the step one, two, and three, um, and at the right place. So if I go into detail, on the first step, the, the mask and the technology will release first the pHA that will really like detox, exfoliate, clean and prepare your skin for LC cellular replication because it doesn't make sense to go into regeneration mode if your cells are not kind of clean or LC. Uh, so it's really important to really reset your skin to have the full benefits of the next two steps. And then, so this is between approximately 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. Then the skin naturally go on the second mode, that is a repair process, a regeneration process from 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. And at that time, the mask will release all the ingredients such as peptides, such as retinol, to really like help and enhance your skin into its natural regeneration and repair process. And it will really like replicate healthy cells because we clean and we really like detox the skin at first and then at 4 a.m you don't need to wake up uh, the mask will really like really thanks to our technology like two molecular weight of acid uh, hyaluronic acids and the ceramides to really like nourish your skin to really moisturize but also to improve your skin barrier and this and like Having like a really like a supporting skin barrier during winter time is really like a must because this is your skin barrier that protects your skin. And after this ultimate treatment, you really wake up, wake up completely rejuvenated, luminous and healthy. So this is like really the ultimate overnight treatment. And to your point and all the discussion we had, when the time change that when you have this shift of timing, like in winter time, as an example, the mask is still working. It has this program sequence that has been programmed. And even if the clock, and you will tell me if I'm right, but even if the clock shifts, you must maintain the same regimen. This is very important. So the mask will continue to work as usual. And what I will even say is that as we have less lights, I would say during winter time, this is also the this time, then we need to take more time for ourselves. And we could spend like five minutes in the bathroom and take more time and massage the skin and do this mini facial at home with our mask. When you buy your mask, we have this gua sha that I have over there that yes. will really like help you to eat so gorgeous. So uh, it's a white jet. And it will really like help you to massage your skin and taking this time. So I do think it's good for the mood and to feel good, to feel like, uh, to feel good. Yes. And also during winter time, we need more enrichment product like this. So I would really advise to use a mask at least once or twice a week instead of sometimes some women use a mask twice, like twice a month or every two weeks. So I think we need to have more mask and enrichment during winter time. So well said. Yeah, absolutely. And with that, I would echo right in alignment with what we were talking about, about training children on how to have those yes. consistent routines. We want to do that too. I want to underscore that because I think it cannot be breezed over how much of a kind of a Pavlovian response seems to come about for us. If we start doing the same thing around the same time, the body will begin to anticipate and act in accordance with that. And it really helps support us so that we're not having to do all this coaxing and extra work to get ourselves to fall asleep. So, you know, if you want to meditate and listen to sound bath and do all these extra things, great, no problem. But 
the thing that we really can't really step over is that these basic steps that you can really take to prioritize just down regulation and calming and relaxation, how much that can help tell the body what to be doing and when. So the importance of really training your body and introducing these consistent sleep patterns is just so, so huge. We spoke about the consistent wake up time. And so for anyone listening, I would love for you to start even just there with the consistent wake up piece. Naturally, what we find is that the bedtime will follow that as you consistently have that wake up time. But we, we see that sometimes if people are trying to hit the bedtime and then they miss the bedtime and then that's when the (laughs) wake up time falls out and it's just, you know, forget that for now, just really focus on hitting that consistent wake up time day in, day out. And over time, this won't happen overnight. This won't happen in two days, three days, but over time you will entrain this process. And so one of the things that you will entrain when we talk about entrainment is you entrain these rhythms. So that's a huge one. So if you are struggling with your sleep right now, one of the um, tests that you could take is to get a sense of where your hormones are. And two important hormones in this conversation are cortisol and melatonin. So we want to make sure that there's a nice interplay of those two hormones, that you're having a beautiful cortisol pulse in the morning. And I know cortisol can get a bad rap, but we want to have natural cortisol at kind of ideal, the right amount in the morning, not too high, but not too low, but kind of a a right, nice in the middle pulse so that it's almost like natural coffee. It's giving you the energy that you need to get up and do all the things you want to do. And so you have that beautiful pulse in the morning. It's kind of at some of the highest rates. And then it's beginning to subside if things are working throughout the course of the day. Now, unfortunately, we see when people are not having consistent routines and not having consistent rhythms that that pulse gets pushed out. And we don't want to see that. We don't want to see you running around with these high cortisol levels at the wrong times. And then unfortunately, some people have an inappropriate rise in cortisol in the evening when we want to be doing exactly the opposite of that. We want to actually be rising in melatonin, which is that sleep hormone and also a master antioxidant in the conversation of anti-aging, longevity, health. It's just such a huge hormone to take advantage of. And it's gotten a lot of press in recent years as it relates to the pandemic and viruses and immune system and immune function. So there's a lot of benefits that you want to make sure you're minding your melatonin. But one of the things that you can do to get those on track is not so sexy, but it's being consistent. And so it's having that consistent wake up time, consistent light exposure on the front end, get that cortisol pulse working and right and functioning and consistent. And then by virtue of that kind of those two bookends, the high cortisol in the morning and then the high melatonin at night, then over time that really takes care of a lot of sleep difficulties for many people. Now, I don't want to breeze over if you're dealing with other things, sleep apnea, other issues with your sleep, you absolutely want to tend to those things. But Even if you have some of those things, getting these things right is just so foundational and so important for so many of us. So we want to make sure we really prioritize that. And let's have that include a healthy skincare regimen. So right in the evening, how could we right help support bathing in that melatonin by having darker environments? I like to have people, if possible use candlelight or nice kind of mood lighting. So it's just a nice relaxing routine and ritual that you actually look forward to. And then for sure, bringing in the gua sha techniques, the self-care, the massage, all of those things are going to be really, really helpful to wind down and support that consistent evening bedtime. I think with everything, we should be all good. (laughs) I I think so too, right? I feel like we kind of hit on everything. (laughs) Yes. Awesome. Now, Speaking of that nighttime routine, I wonder if you could share a little bit more about the thinking of why with Nobel Panacea, they really prioritize the gua sha treatment, the applicator. Why was that really underscored and part of this process? What was the thinking there as it relates to sleep? So I would say, like, as you said, on top, like what, the most important thing is to have a very consistent even skincare routine, as you say, like a very consistent time to go to sleep and, and a routine to go to sleep. This is the same with skincare. But on the top of that, massage your skin is also a super good and important complement to your cream, to your mask, to your serum, because this is just a mechanic, like massaging your skin, activate your skin is so beneficial. 
because it will really promote like healthy blood microcirculation and lymphatic drainage because this will give you really like this glowy skin that you really want during the winter time. It will also like make your skin really much more firmer and it will be more lift. And also it will really like release all the tension. And I would say it's also important to release the tension of your skin and of your muscles before going to bed. Um, and thanks to massage and with the complementary of the product, your skin will look much more awake and revitalized and healthy. So I do think we should massage, especially during winter time, our skin even more um, to really complement first our skincare and to just take more time for ourselves to feel better. Absolutely. Right? Oh, couldn't agree more. Well, I love... Do you want to go to bed now, right now? And I know. Your... <laughs> I'm done with the day. You know, this is great. Let's I go. really Let's go appreciate that because, you know, I, I really do deal with this where so many clients will say, okay, I, w- I want to take this seriously. I want to prioritize my sleep. I'm going to put away some of the screens earlier and start winding down. But then what do I do? So I just appreciate that this kind of luxurious, nice option that actually has these ongoing effects and impacts are available with a company that really does prioritize the fact that sleep and our internal clocks, this conversation of chronobiology, the science of time and how time affects our biology is so, so crucial, so important. And I think we're going to see more and more companies begin to get into this conversation and understand that we can leverage this. But unfortunately, we don't see a ton of them at the moment. So I appreciate that you all are standing as pioneers in this space. So I'm just grateful to be a part of what you all are doing. And from that place, I think it could make a lot of sense for us to share how can people learn more about you all if they want to test this out for themselves. Of course. So you can definitely like visit our website, nobelpanacea.com. And we also have like our skincare concierge that you can connect with, with the, um, on our website. And they can really give you like the best advice on the best product to use, uh, the best ritual of, of gesture to use. So to, as we explain, like even like have better skin results. Absolutely. Oh, well, thank you so much for taking the time. It means just a ton. And I'm using your products really every single night. It's become a part of my routine. And I just appreciate the work that you all are doing. Thank you so much, Molly. And, and so thank you so much for what you just said. And, and thank you so much for being also with us today. And I've shared like all of this, I would say like invaluable inputs and advice that I need to start now implementing in my consistent routine. And I will keep you updated on the results. Fantastic. Yes, please do. I would love to hear about that. And for anyone listening, please share with us what you discover or if anything is unclear, if you'd like uh, further assistance on how to prioritize sleep, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're really a stand that you bring this conversation of sleep into the anti-aging longevity yes. conversation. So really, really appreciate that. Thank you so much and more to come. Thank you. You've been listening to the Sleep is a Skill podcast, the number one podcast for people who want to take their sleep skills to the next level. Every Monday, I send out something that I call Molly's Monday Obsessions, containing everything that I'm obsessing over in the world of sleep. Head on over to sleepisaskill.com to sign up.